morning this devotion. This conference will now be recorded. Amen. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we thank God for allowing us to wake up and see another day. I'm going to go ahead and pray to start it off. Go ahead and wipe your eyes. Shake yourself up a little bit. I know it's early, but God is good. He's getting ready to do something in our lives. He's getting ready to do something in your family. He's getting ready to do something in everything that you desire for your life. So just continue to just be faithful. Continue to be consistent. Continue to seek God. Continue to be on this prayer line. Continue to do whatever you got to do to make sure that God, hallelujah, sees you and hears from you. Amen. So, Father, we give you the glory, the honor, the praise. Father, we just thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to see you again, oh God. Another opportunity, Father God, presence. Another opportunity, Father God, for us to gather together, oh God, to grow together, to be in, in you, Father God, through the word, through everything that you're trying to pour out on us, oh God, in a spirit, Father God, through the devotion, Father God, of us uh, hearing your voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we praise you, Father God. We worship you, O oh God. Father, there is none like you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, there's someone that did, may not have woken up this morning. There's some people that may not have this opportunity, Father God, to be able to get up, get on a prayer line and seek you, Father God, and have an opportunity, Father God, to learn, oh, Father God, and grow in you, Lord God. But you get granted us that opportunity, and we just tell you thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, despite what's going on in the world, despite what's going on in the atmosphere, Father God, despite what's going on in our everyday lives, Father God, you are still here. You are still alive and you're still well. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, you are still here, Father God, you are still alive. You're still well. You're still moving behind the scenes, Father God. Your hand is still moving, oh God, in the name of Jesus on behalf of your people. It's still moving, Father God, on behalf, no, Father God, of our family. It's still moving on behalf of everything, Father God, that we're going through. Father God, despite of us not being thinking that we can't see it, oh God, but we know, Lord God, that you're moving, oh God. So we believe you, Father God. We trust you, oh God, and we know, Father God, that there's nothing that you can't do in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. So, Father God, allow your power to move this morning, even now. Allow your spirit to shift right now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Allow us, Lord Father God, to go into another level realm in you, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we receive everything, Father God, that you have to pour out, oh God. We receive, Father God, everything that you're trying to show us, oh God. We receive all things, Father God. You're trying to give us instructions to do, Father, through this season, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So, Lord Father God, we bless you. We trust you and worship you, Father God. Allow the word to touch your people on this morning. Allow, Lord Father God, what you're getting ready to share, Father God. Allow us to go to another place in you, in the name of Jesus. So, we give you the glory, the honor, the praise, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So, today is May 22nd. Hallelujah. And we're going to be talking about uh, from coming from Proverbs 15 22. And the devotional this morning is hearing his voice. Hallelujah. So, we're going to go ahead and um, so the Proverbs 15 22 says, Plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. Once again, the word says plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. We wish we, we, we wish God would write his words in the sky or speak audibly to our ears. We long for concrete, tangible, communication from him but god is spirit and he communicates spiritually we can hear him in the depths of our spirits and sometimes he speaks more audibly than that and he has given us his word as a revelation of his general will for all humanity still we yearn for god in the flesh jesus came as god in the flesh of course that's when the incarnation was all about. But as the time of Jesus' death neared, he told his disciples that it was good for him to go. Why? Because his spirit would then come and live inside of us. There would be numerous incarnations as the followers of Jesus became temples of the spirit of Jesus. Later in the New Testament, the church is called the body of Christ. In this world, Christ followers become his hands and his feet and his voice. 
His people are to become the physical expression of his spiritual nature. When we need to hear an audible voice, it will often come through the people around us who are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why scripture tells us there is success in many advisors. In Solomon's time, when most of the Proverbs were written, this was perhaps only wise advice to keep a person balanced in his perspective and decisions. After the advent of the Holy Spirit enter into the inner lives of believers, the advice takes on even greater significance. The people around us aren't simply advisors with a diversity of opinions. They have the capacity to speak words inspired by the Spirit himself. When you listen to the wisdom of fellow believers, God's voice will likely be somewhere in the mix. But you'll have to discern it, but it's there. Surround yourself with Spirit-filled people and listen to what the Spirit says through them. The prayer for this morning is the Spirit of God, speak to me through your people. Let your voice ring true when they speak your words. I cannot travel this journey alone. Fill your people with truth. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, 22 states how plans go wrong for lack of advice. Your dreams go wrong because of lack of advice, which also can mean guidance. Even your spirit man begin to go wrong because of lack of obeying God's instructions through the word. I want to encourage you this morning and let you know that there is success if you just reset. There is success if you allow yourself to reset. Reset by allowing God to come back and being the head of your life and not going to him after you went seeking advice from someone or something else. I'm going to say it again. Reset by allowing God to come back and being the head of your life and not going to him after you went seeking advice from someone or something else. Why do many times the children of God fail to take advice from the advisors that God has placed in our lives, but many times they want to ignore what the advisor is saying and want to follow the self advisor? Many times because we do not want to follow the instructions of the word of God, we have to learn the hard way and try to bounce back. But we don't understand that bouncing back won't be as easy as taking the advice of the advisor the first time. Reset. Who are the advisors in the land today? The, the advisors are anyone who is filled and baptized by the power of the Holy Ghost. The advisor is someone who is trained in the word of God, who lives by the word of God, and someone that eats and breathes the word of God. The Holy Ghost field advisor can be your pastor, your apostle, your co-worker, friend, cousin, sister, auntie. It doesn't matter. If someone is coming to you with what key word, what God's word says, it is never wrong. I'm going to say it again. It doesn't matter if someone is coming to you with, as long as they're coming to you with what the word of God is saying, it's never wrong. See, we're in denial when we are getting advice on something opposite of what your flesh wants you to do. But we do not want to take heed on what God wants you to do. We ask our pastors for counsel on an issue, but if it's not what you want to hear, you make the bad decision anyway, but God doesn't forget that. Not to your leader. Two years later now, Proverbs 15, 22, the plan, that decision you made went wrong, right? It went wrong. That ungodly decision is still knocking at your door and causing you stress. It's causing you worry. It's causing you no peace. It's causing you no sleep. But all you had to do was take the godly advice. You must understand that you do not have choices. You do have choices. You do have choices. 
So when you make the decision to go against the word of God, don't blame God or the enemy for what has happened because of your decision. Too many times it's the enemy's fault, even when in reality, it is your fault. The enemy is attacking my mind. No, you are attacking your own mind because the advisor told you not to go to sleep with that person. Not, now the stronghold is on you. The enemy attacking me on the job. No, it's not the enemy because the Bible says give respect to authority and he gives instructions on how to work your job unto God. But if coming to work late, if you're coming to work late and not doing what you're supposed to do, to do that's on you, not God or the enemy. The enemy can attack because you will go through trials and tribulations in life. But what I'm saying is that do not compare being disobedient to God with going through your tests and trials in order for God to build you up. There's a difference. Do not compare being disobedient to God with you going through tests and trials in order for God to build you up. There's a difference. When you are doing all you know how and God sees your heart, he is preparing you for elevation in your faith and through your situation. But when you intentionally ignore and do what you want to do despite counsel being received, you are setting yourself up for deflation in the spirit. We thank God for his grace and mercy because he always gives us an opportunity to bounce back. But we must realize that it must be done through his word and his will. That's why the spirit of God must live in us. When Jesus died, he died because he knew the decision we would make would be opposite of what God has called us to do. So Christ had to lay down his life so that when you did fail, he is able to give you the grace needed and vouch for you before God in order to go back and seek godly advice. The book says it. He says we can hear him in the depths of our spirit. We can hear him in the depths of our spirit. Many times God is speaking, but we aren't listening. Holy Spirit is very sensitive. Many people like to say, something told me I should have, shouldn't have done that. Or you feel slightly uncomfortable feeling when you're getting ready to do something or say something you're not supposed to do, but we do it anyway. That's the Spirit of God, not just something. Everything we need to know about life is in the Word of God. The Bible talks about health. The Bible talks about wealth. He talks about love. He talks about how to be kind. He talks about how to be humble. He talks about business. He talks about how to deal with people in the church instead of claiming church hurt. He talks about how to deal with mind attacks, how to, how to deal with attacks against our family, how to deal with attacks against our children, how to fight sickness and disease, how to avoid sickness and disease, how to get to heaven and how you can end up in hell. The word of God is the only way of survival. But we yearn. We yearn, we yearn, we continue to yearn, we continue to yearn. We continue to say we feel so distant from the presence of God, so distant from prayer. God never distances himself from his people. His people distance themselves from him. Because God is always available. He's always there, but we don't want, we do not want to make ourselves available before him. God wants to spend time with us, but we can't spend 10 minutes with him. But yet we yearn. We have gotten too comfortable with things going bad first, then having to try and bounce back later. The devil is a liar. We need to get it right, right now in the name of Jesus. We are allowing the enemy access by opening many doors because we take ungodly and unholy advice. We must be careful because once the enemy enters in, he is coming after everything you're connected to. When you're disconnected from God, you can't hear in the spirit. When you're disconnected from God, you cannot see in the spirit. Then, you, then, you're, then if you are in the spirit, when you're disconnected from God, your prayer isn't as effective because people of God, this isn't the time and the season to allow yourself to disconnect. We are all supposed to be advisors for the kingdom, giving godly advice to people in the nation. We are one with Christ. We are supposed to be telling the truth. There are too many lies, be, lies being spread throughout the nation, too many lies being spread throughout the government, and too many lies being spread throughout the church. It is time for the advisors of Christ to rise up. The word of God will keep you through it all. The word balances you. It keeps you on point. Your relationship with God needs to be in a place where even if you begin to slack in prayer, 
and in your word, that Holy Spirit only has to speak to you once to get you back in place. As advisors for Christ, when we are giving people instructions through the word or through the spirit of God, it goes even deeper because God is using you to speak to those individuals and to guide them in the right path. God is speaking through you. His spirit speaks through you. He communicates spiritually. So be encouraged and don't allow yourself to fall off from what God has called us to do. So rise up. Get into position. Pray and fast. Read your word. Assemble yourselves together to be built up. Take heed and instruction to what God is saying the first time. You must reset and go forth. If you believe that today, just go ahead and type in the chat box and say reset and go forth. Reset and go forth. I know I may have, may have slacked. I know I may, have, I may have lacked in some areas, Father. But Father, I need your help today. I need your help to get myself back aligned with what you're trying to tell me to do. I need to get back to a place where I'm able to hear in the spirit, where I'm able to take godly advice, where I'm able to give godly advice. Reset and go forth. I need to get it right. I need to be in a place in a position where when I hear your God from you the first time, when I hear your advice from, from, from you the first time, Father, that I can walk into your advice. I can walk through your word. I can walk it through what you're telling me to do the first time so I don't have to go through. So I don't have to go through those things that I could have avoided. But Father, have your way. Have your way in me. Do what you have to do. God has given revelation, y'all. He's already spoken it in his word. Everything that he spoke in his word has already come to pass. It's already the truth. It's already going to give you the guidance for your life. But you must take heed. Reset and go forth. You have an opportunity to breathe right now. You must reset and go forth. If you have an opportunity right now to repent and go forth. You have an opportunity right now to to, to, to get it all together, to, to go into prayer, to get yourself re reconnected with God, to go forth. Reset and go forth. It is not too late. It is not too late. God wants to communicate with us in the spirit. But don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. Don't allow yourself to fall into that, to, to some mess that you don't have to go through because of the lack of advice, because of the lack of taking in and heeding of God's word. Reset and go forth in Jesus' name. So, Father, we tell you thank you. We worship you. We praise you. And I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that every person that's on this line this morning, Father God, that may have gone through a situation like that, that may have gone, that is currently going through a situation like that, Father God, I pray to Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we're interceding now on their behalf, that, Lord, Father God, you're resetting their lives, you're resetting that situation, Father God, and they can rise up now with confidence in the spirit, knowing, Father God, that you're there to help them go forth, Father God. That, Lord, Father God, they will not be, Lord, Father God, in that same place. Uh, they will not continue to go through that same thing. They will not continue to go through that same situation, that same mess, Father God. But, Lord, Father God, that when you come to them, Father God, when you release a word unto them, Father God, that they'll take it, oh God, and take it, Father God, and run for it, Father God. They'll take your word, Father God, knowing that your word is truth, Father God, knowing that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that they'll go to another level in you, Father God. All we have to do, Father God, is receive everything that you're giving us and everything that you're telling us right now. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you and we worship you, Father God, for there is none like you. Father, people of God, take heed. Take heed, people of God. Reset and go forth from this day forward. Like I said, you have a responsibility that as people are giving you advice, you are also the advisor. If the Spirit of God lives in you, the you are the one giving the message, sending the message of the Word of God to the people that need to hear it, the truth of God, to the people of the world to hear it. 